the track around the church are gone. Thank God for the foam. Hey Amen. Give me a hey. good hand. Don't you thank God for that foam you're sitting on right now? It's a lot better than sitting on them old wooden pews. I'll tell you that yes, right Yes, it now. is. I've tried it. I've been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, you, you sit there for a while, it hurts for a while, and then it gets numb. <laughs> That's the best time when it gets numb. <laughs> what a beautiful thought I am thinking concerning a great speckled bird. Remember her name is recorded on the pages of God's holy word. Desiring to lower her standard, they watch every move that she made. They long to find fault with her teaching, but really they find no mistake. I am glad I have learned of her weakness. I am glad that my name is on the book, for I want to be one never fearing on the face of my Savior to look. When he cometh, descend him from heaven on a cloud as he rides in his word. I'll be joyfully carried to meet him on the wings of that great speckled bird. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> I know I'm not worthy to call upon your name. All my life I've been a sinner, and for that I am ashamed. But I heard you would listen, so I'm giving you my plea. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Would you please come down to me? I know that there are others who could offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. I think I've just hit the bottom and I'm looking up to see. I'm unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? I guess I must be reaping from the seed that I have sown. Lord, you owe me nothing. We haven't spoken for so long. But if you could spare some mercy, I'll pledge my life to thee. I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you. Could you please come down to me? I know there are others who could offer more than I. I promise you I'd understand if for me you had no time. I think I've just hit the bottom. And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you Could you please come down to me? I think I've just hit bottom And I'm looking up to see I'm too unworthy, Lord, to come to you Could you please come down to me? Come down to me. Amen. Oh, brother. Is that a song? That was 
sermon in that song, brother. I'll tell you right now. Amen. Brother, there's a sermon in there. I'll just sing this one right here. The angel of death. You believe there's an angel of death? I do. Yeah. In the great book of John, you're warned of the day when you'll be laid beneath the cold clay. Time comes to die when the angel of death comes now after you. Can you smile and say you have been true? Can you truthfully say with your dying breath that you're ready to meet the angel of death? When the lights all grow dim And the dark shadows creep And then your loved ones Are all gathered to weep Can you face them and say With your dying breath That you're ready to meet The angel of death With the angel of death comes down after you can you smile and say that you have been through can you truthfully say with your dying breath that you're ready to meet the angel of death that you're ready to meet the angel of death I believe that, brother. Amen, Billy you know who, Joe. You know who wrote that song, brother? Who's that? Hank Williams. Yeah, amen. Well, give us one more, and then we'll get to preaching here. Okay. I was, I'll do the one you like the most. <laughs> he walked up to my front porch with his Bible in his hand. And I could tell by the way he looked, he was an old-time preacher man. He asked, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. I'd like to talk to you, he said, about a friend of mine. He was an old-time preacher man. He came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. Taught me how to pray. Jesus died on the cross, the cross at Calvary. Do you believe Jesus died on that cross for you? Well, if you do, then trust him now, and he will save you too. He was an old-time preacher man. He came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray. Thank you, thank you, Brother Joe. Well, amen, we're going to go to John chapter 1 today. If you can turn in your Bibles to John chapter 1. I like to get to John every once in a while. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful book. They're all, the book, Bible's all wonderful. But I like to get to John chapter 1 every once in a while. Or the book of John, but we're going to look at 1 today. There's a lot of foolishness going around in America today about religion. Thank you, brother. 
N. I asked, uh, before we start reading, I in Sunday school this morning, we participate in Sunday school, and we do Sunday school for the day of the month. 26 today, we did 26 uh, Proverbs, and we have interaction. And uh, we... Uh, I asked a question in Sunday school, and I said, what percent? There had just been a, a, a poll taken recently, a Pew poll. It's, it's, it's a pretty good poll, I guess, and people seem to trust it in that. And uh, they took the, the poll, and they asked the questions about uh, religion in America. And they, took, they, pull, they polled a whole bunch of people. And they, what the percentages were, and this will shock you. I asked Christian Sunday School here. I asked him in Sunday School today, and I said, "How many of you think in the in the in the a poll identified their self as Christian in America?" Someone said forty-two percent. I think someone else said forty-seven percent. Someone said sixty percent. And uh, they're. Uh, they're all way off. Now, if you listen to the news media today and you listen to what I would call politically correctness of today, you'd think that other religions were just as big as Christianity in America. 83% of people uh, polled in a, in a big poll, Pew poll, 83% identify themselves as Christians. 83%. It's good news, but you never knew it to listen to the news. You think Christianity is wrong and wicked and we dare not mention Christ in the schools? Why, back in my school when I was a kid, we used to have a major scene. And sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sings. Yeah. You can't get that near the church today. No. Back in the founding of America, in the little one-room schoolhouse where everybody was in the same room, they used the McGuffey Reader. Yeah. You know how... You know how you learned your ABCs in a McGuffey Reader? You can look it up. Look it up on the internet. A stood for a certain Bible verse. B stood for another and so on. You learned your, by the books, by the Bible you learned. Amen. And I'll tell you something. I'm just going to talk about this before we get into John chapter 1 today. I was appalled when I read in the religion section of the newspaper this weekend they showed a giant mosque. It cost anywhere from $37 million to twice that cost. They don't know for sure. Muslims are sneaky people. And uh, that big, and any of you see it in the paper? I guess you don't you know, read the paper. I didn't get it for a long time. My wife said the Christmas season, I'd quit it for years. My wife said, get it. I get it around Christmas time. See some ads in the paper or something before Christmas, so I got it. She showed it to me. She says, "Honey, they built a mosque over here in Sanford. It's right, right in Sanford here, Central Florida. It's it's somewhere the value and they're, they you know they're tricky. They don't tell you much. They don't tell you. I bet you the money came from Iran to build it. The mosque. They say it's anywhere." From thirty-seven million to twice that cost, that would be uh, seventy-four million, double thirty-seven. And it's a Shiite mosque. See, most most people they don't even know the difference between a Shiite and a Sunni. They, they don't. They're just a Muslim. Well, they really they use the same book, and that's the Quran. But the Shiite Muslim. That's what's there in, in Sanford to draw people from all over America and around the world 
uh, uh, to Central Florida here because they've been migrating here because these ones from the north, in, in, uh, there's a bunch of them in New Jersey, you know, a lot of them in New Jersey, and not other northern cities there. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of them in Dearborn, Michigan, where they got the mayor and the commissioners and everything else. But this one out here in Sanford now, it's a, a Shiite. That's Iran. Iran is almost, I don't think you can be anything but Shiite in Iran. That's the ones that did the Twin Towers. Yeah, the, 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 that's the one that won the Twin Towers. And by the way, Muslims, Muslims all over the world just just Google back on the day the Twin Towers came down and see how you saw millions and millions and millions of Muslims in America and around the world dancing in the streets because the Twin Towers came down. You watch out for them Muslims. But here's the treachery. Here's the treachery of them. I didn't bring the paper. I took a picture of it. That went to this phone too, notepad. Let me look here. Notes. Come on, notes. Back to that. Well, I don't know why they ain't coming up. We'll see. When I do it on one, it's supposed to do it on the others. All my iPhones, okay. Like right that. I'm gonna find it here. I will get it. Well, Tate was said. The Iman from Sanford with this most luxurious mosque in America. That mosque, the Iman from it, invited all religions in there. They opened it in August. You didn't hear much about it. They had a big spread about it in the paper today. Nothing negative. Nothing about Twin Towers. Nothing about terrorism at all. You see, the newspapers, they make Muslims look good and Christians look bad. Muslims are the terrorists. They ain't Christians. You read a lot of bad stuff about Christians in the newspaper and a lot of good stuff about Muslims. This iman from this, I mean, they brought, uh, they told about the, uh, they brought in marble from Turkey to build that mosque. Marble from Turkey. Somewhere between 37 and $74 million to build that mosque. The finest one in America, like on the one of the finest in the world that they made out of this, this, this similar stone. But he invited all the other religions. As you see, the thing of the day is People don't even know that 83% of America says they're Christians. Only 4% of America claims to be a different religion. And then about, what is it, about 10% or so, a little over 10%, 50% don't claim any kind of religion. 1% of America Muslims. 83% Christian. They say more nice things in the newspaper about Muslims than they do about Christians. Christians are downgraded. Christians are railed upon. Yeah. <clears throat> but this, watch out for them imams. Read the Quran. You'll see what they're all about. You'll see all about what caliphate is about and what jihad is all about and what uh, uh, death to Israel, death to America. Death to Christians. That's what that's what they're all about. I just said that because we gotta be reminded. My church has to be reminded, and the people on Facebook have to be reminded. Amen. But this lion Iman, 
says he wanted all the religions to come in there and see their multi, multi, multi million dollar mosque because we all got to get together. Boy, I got a basketball player here today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Was you here Thursday? Huh? I had a bunch of, I had 15 basketball players. Half of them were your size. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember all of it. It's the first time they've ever been here. Where do you play basketball? I used to. I don't play anymore. Do you? Yeah. Man, you look like NBA. You know, uh, what's your name, sir? C. Anthony Fleming. D. Anthony. D. D. Anthony Fleming. Yes, sir. Well, D. Anthony Fleming, you know, I had to quit playing basketball. You know why? Why is that? I hit my head on the rim all the time. Boy, boy, boy. I don't know. Yeah. You don't believe that, Billy Joe? No. <laughs> now, for you that didn't see D. Anthony Fleming come in, he had to duck his head down to come in a standard door. How tall are you? Six, six. Is that all? I thought you were seven foot six. <laughs> you're big, you're big, big man. But anyway, let me tell you something. Uh, they print it in there. They don't say. Uh, they just say like this is this is it. These nice folks from Iran are in here, built a thirty-seven million to seventy-five million dollar mosque, and he's inviting all the religions in there. Because we, he says we all worship the same God. Liar! He's a dirty liar come out of hell. You ever see them YouTube videos of Muslims cutting Christians' throats? Huh? Yeah. Don't come out that baloney. See, they come in small and friendly. And the bigger they get, watch out. Muslim religion is a political system more than it is a religion. Their political system is to take the world over. They want to put Sharia law in all around the world. There are neighborhoods in France. There were basketball players from France here Thursday. England, there were basketball players from England here Thursday. There was one, uh, a lot of the countries that were here that were represented basketball, they were European basketball players. And uh, they've got uh, what the Muslims have done in that country with their open borders. They can terrorize in one of them countries and just jump right over the border. They don't have, they don't have to worry about being stopped or anything. I told you that because a warning needs to be made by Christians around America. 83% of America represents their selves as Christians, 1% as Muslims. Muslims get all the wonderful fanfare and everything. Christians are downgraded. We're talked against. How sad. How sad. Well, anyway, uh, watch out. Watch out for that mosque in Sanford that they had in the religious section of the newspaper and the journal. This year. You, you look at it. And see what you think. But he ain't telling the truth. You read the Quran, you want to see what Muslims are about. Yeah, you read what jihad is, and you just see what they're doing around the world. Amen. Uh, by the way, I had I read some more information on it. The majority of the Muslims that are here in America immigrated. 10% of immigrants to America are Muslims. The biggest group of any group I'm talking about now. Watch out. Watch out. Because uh, good old in God we trust, United States of America, Christian nation, is getting invaded. So watch it. John chapter 1. Let's look at it. I thought it was necessary. Not enough said about it. Christians don't don't know nothing today. They ignorant of so much. What's going on in America today? 
John chapter 1, 1, 1. In the beginning, that's before anything that was made. In the beginning, John 1, 1, was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I love that. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ, the Word. The living Word. God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Who? Jesus Christ, the Word. He's a great Creator. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. Amen. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light about shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. You know the world in general does not recognize Jesus Christ. The world in general shuns Christ and, and will not accept Him. We're just a bright light as a Christian in a lost and dying world that's headed for, for hell. The vast... I listen. This is shock, knocked the socks off you. 83%. Now, somebody's going to get mad at me. Maybe some of these Facebook people get mad at me. Maybe you get mad at me. I don't know. But you see... 83% of America claims to be Christian and yet the vast majority of Americans are going to hell. Huh? Well, how can Christians go to hell? Real Christians don't go to hell. Fake Christians do. There's churches all up and down these streets out here and all over America that are playing church. Yeah? Yeah? They don't teach the born-again experience. They teach work salvation. And I talked with a guy the other day, and I knew his dad, and and uh, I ain't going to tell you all the details of the conversation. And I, I just met the young man, a fine young man, a college student. And uh, the situation doesn't matter, and uh, but there was some sadness in it. He was a fine young man, and uh, I'd known his dad for years. And, and I asked him... Uh, what he knew about Christianity, and I says, "Are you a Christian?" He says, "Yeah, I'm a." He says, "I'm a confirmed Catholic." And he says, "I was confirmed when I was 12 years old as a Catholic." And uh, I said, "Have you ever?" Have you, and by the way, there's uh, I forget. I think 20 uh, percent of those that claim to be Christians in America claim to be Catholic. 40 percent claim to be Protestants, or other. Uh, non-Catholic so you got uh, and then uh, I forget oh no I guess the evangelicals are probably whatever but anyway he was a nice young man I said D did you ever do you know anything about uh, he said I was confirmed I believe I'm a Christian because I'm a confirmed Catholic I says have you ever heard of the born again experience or how to be saved and he was very honest with me actually and he was a, a college student and a bright young man actually and he's working I met him on his job and and uh, he said, I don't know anything about that. Because you see, a lot, of, a lot of Americans that claim Christianity, whether it be Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian or whatever, they're not real Christians because a real Christian is what? A born again, amen? <laughs> Jesus said, ye must be born again. And the light shineth in the darkness, the darkness of America. The light of the born-again experience shines in the darkness of Christianity in America. 83% of people claiming they're Christians. Yeah. And yet, a small percentage of that being born-again Christians. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God. I love a God's man. There's a man sent from God whose name was John. That's John the Baptist. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might be believed. Who? All men through whom might believe? Jesus Christ. You see, you go to heaven for believing in Jesus Christ, not belonging to the Catholic Church or the Lutheran Church or the Baptist Church or the Presbyterian Church or the Pentecostal Church. You come, to, you come to God through the born-again experience. The Bible says you must be born again. That's what you have to be, born again. He was not the light, this is John the Baptist again, but was sent to bear witness of the light, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. 
That was the true light. Oh, man. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The true, uh, that was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Did you know that every, uh, everybody that goes to hell is going to go to hell because they rejected Jesus Christ? Anybody that wants the gospel in any part of this world will have the gospel. Because the Bible right here says that Jesus is the light that lighteth every man. It was one of the most troubling things that I had when I was first saved. I was worried about people uh, in the darkest corners of the world, in, in uh, uh, jungles where uh, there was, uh, you know, that where, where you think there had no... But by the way, let me tell you, I did a lot of study on that too. You know, you know, a lot of these tribes in certain jungles in parts of the world, when they were praying to know God, what would God do? Send a missionary. Amen. I've, I've talked to from, from New Tribes missionaries, New Tribes uh, headquarters. Uh, they have their retirement centers out here on Lake Monroe in Sanford. Right out there. Thank God we got the New Tribes out there in Sanford where the Muslims are trying to take over there now. Build hundreds of millions of dollars. Not hundreds of millions, but millions and millions. 37 to 74 million. Yeah. They out there, New Tribes... And I, I, I was growing up with them. Their Bible school was in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I was in New Berlin, Wisconsin, right there, a suburb of, of Milwaukee. And uh, I had Mernest and of theirs when the missionaries would get there, and they would find tribes that didn't have a language, and they'd, they'd make a language for them. And they'd say, we were praying that God would reveal himself, and they'd get saved, you know. And so I, 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 I believe that, uh, that. Now, here's what I figure out. You can believe it. I don't care if you believe it or not. It satisfied me years ago. I went to different pastors. I guess God saved us. What about these folks in different countries? I went to one pastor. I was doing a Bible study at his, his church uh, in uh, Germantown, Wisconsin, right out there by New Berlin, both suburbs of Milwaukee. And uh, I asked this question, and he says, Well, you know, people out in the jungle and that, he took me to uh, Romans chapter 1, and he told me because of Romans 1, people could get saved because they saw God in the sun and in, uh, in nature. And he says, that's why. I was just a brand new convert. This was a pastor, you know. He had been. <laughs> I said, that ain't right. <laughs> he looked at me. What do you mean it ain't right? I says, the Bible says you only get saved through Jesus Christ. It didn't say you get saved through looking at bushes and trees and animals. <laughs> huh? No. I'm just simple. We're just simple folks, right, Billy Joe? That's right. If you don't get through, you don't get saved through Jesus. You don't get saved. Right. Here's what God told me. I mean, He didn't tell me in a in an audible voice, but He assured it with my spirit. If there was some place in this world where he tried to send missionaries, and the missionaries wouldn't go, if someone wanted to get saved, Jesus Christ would go there himself and get them saved, just like he did Paul on the road to Damascus. That's what I say. <laughs> Jesus came to, to Paul himself, didn't he, on the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 9? He came to Jesus himself. Sure Face him. Why, there's nothing too hard for God. Ain't nobody isolated from God. God made everything. He made all people. Amen. He'll send he he generally sends a missionary because how is the gospel propagated? Through individuals like you and I, through saved people. Amen. We get saved, we tell someone else. That's the way the gospel uh, is 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 propagated. Amen. Now, amen. We ain't getting far, but I'm having fun. Verse ten. <laughs> he was in the world. And the world was made by him. Who are they talking about here? Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus. Amen. And the world knew him not. You see, the world in general, and America in general, does not know Jesus. I know him. Aren't you glad you know him? Amen. If you know him, raise your hand. Amen. Do you know him? Praise Woo! Glory to God. I know him. Thank you. I know the power of His resurrection. Amen. 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 I know the fellowship of His sufferings. Amen. Yes. Amen. I've been conformed to His image. Amen. Amen. I love it. Verse 11. So 
we're only going to go to verse 12 because we're running out of time. So good. I got baptized this morning here too. 11. He came unto his own. Who was that? The Jews. Amen. Came unto his own. The Jews. And his own received him not. But here's the verse. Key verse. John 1 is a long chapter. We get to verse 12. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, Jesus Christ, Amen. to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. That's it. I believe in him. Listen now, I got I got saved. Oh, I got saved in a Methodist church. My mother and father were assemblies of God missionaries. I'm a Baptist preacher. It's not the assemblies of God that can save you. It's not the Methodist that can save you. It's not the Baptist that can save you. It's Jesus that can save you. Him and Him alone. Glory. I'm so glad I'm saved. How many of you glad you're saved here today? Amen. I know I'm saved. If you're not saved today, you need it. You better get it. Yes. Jesus said, "Ye must, must, must be born again." As many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. I'm a Baptist preacher of a Baptist church, but I'm not here presenting Baptist to you. I'm not presenting rescue mission to you. I'm presenting Jesus to you. He shed his precious blood. He was buried. And that's what it's all about. I just believe in that old saying, the old KISS statement, K-I-S-S. -S. The old KISS statement is this, keep it Simple, stupid. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. It's Christ and Him alone. He died, He was buried, He rose again, He's my Savior. Amen. Isn't that Praise good? God. Amen. Praise God. Are you saved? We're going to have... Thank you, I'll thank God. <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful <laughs> testimony. <laughs> Ada, come in here. About two weeks ago now, she's supposed to get baptized last Sunday, but I messed up and we didn't get the water in the tub in the baptistry back here. She stuck her head in the door. They're lined up outside to come into mission service, you know. She looked so troubled. She says, Pastor, I got to talk to you. And she had agony on her face. She got to talk to you, didn't you? She had a heavy heart. I say, what is it? And she said, I got such a heavy heart, I got to talk to you. She come in, I says, Ada, are you saved? Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? She said, I'm not sure. I just gave her a couple of verses in Romans. Amen. Ada, the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. And I says, Ada, do you know you're a sinner? She says, I know that. I says, Ada, do you know Jesus? Died? Oh, yeah, I believe that. Ada, would you turn from your sins and, and ask Jesus to save you? The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. She says, yeah, I do that. And she got saved. Amen. Amen. And you know what? She didn't even tell me about all that burden she had. She's got a smile on her face. She's had one on her face since then. Amen? Aren't you glad it's so easy to get saved? Amen! Amen. Glory to God! Amen. Some of you got a burden today. Yeah. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. You feel like a termite in a yo-yo. You don't know if you're going up or down. It's hard. It's difficult. Bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, it's so, it's so simple. It's so wonderful. The plan of salvation. We're going to baptize Ada here. 
where's her? There's your roll and your towel. Grab it, Ada. Go on in the ladies' room and just put that robe on and tell, leave your clothes in there and and then come back out here. We're going to baptize you in a minute. Amen. Huh? Yeah, yeah, everything. Just the robe. That You can't see through that robe or nothing. It's hip, real heavy material. It's a cool out, actually, so it's very... It's very proper. We believe in being proper. We, Amen. we ain't going to have nobody's uh, flesh exposed here that he ain't supposed to show. So, I like that. I do too. Yeah, Every these big old culottes. Yeah. They ain't no fashion statement, but they keep you covered up when you're getting baptized. Amen. You know where me and my wife got baptized at? Uh, huh? Right out of Knoxville, Free River, Bulldog. Did you? Yeah. We got baptized. Knoxville River, you got baptized. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Yeah, but my, my, my son-in-law is a preacher. He baptized down the ocean. That's where he baptized. I know some other preachers, they baptize in swimming pools. You can, as long as you get some water, you can get them under. <laughs> but baptism, you can't sprinkle on nobody's head. That ain't baptism. No. Baptizo, it means immerse. Got to go under the water. Amen. Are you saved? I am. Amen. I'm saved. How about Facebook? Are you saved? Hope so. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, I thank you for my dear people, my church, your church. I'm the pastor of it. I thank you for John 1. These first 12 verses, awesome. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Nothing was made. It was made by Jesus Christ, the great. He came as on His own. His own received Him, not the Jews, but as many as received Him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even though we found his name, I believed. Yes. You're here in the audience today. You say, Pastor, I'm a born-again Christian. It ain't got nothing to do with the denomination. I know I'm saved. I've been born again, and I know it. Would you slip your hand up? I'm born again. Yes. God bless you. Yes. Maybe put your hands down. You say, Preacher, I'm not sure. If I die tonight, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven, but I'm concerned about it. I'm concerned about it. Yes. Would you? Pray for me. If I die tonight, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I want you to pray for me. I'm concerned about it. I don't want to go to hell. Please give a prayer up for me. Amen. Pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Just the pastor looking around. Would you slip your hand up? Just slip it up. Let me see your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Had some raise. Anybody else want to add there? Need to pray for them. I've had some hands raised. Yes, God bless you, sir. Anybody else? Just slip your hand up. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Yes. If, yeah, if my heart stopped yes. beating, there's another one. Amen. I'm not sure. Yes, God bless you. Amen. Number of hands being raised today. That's wonderful. Praise Amen. God. Anyone else want to? You haven't slipped your hand up yet. If you want to just slip it up. Yes, God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Lord, thank you. You're still in the soul-saving business. You've convicted these dear, precious people. There's been a good number of people that have raised their hands today seeking prayer for salvation. Holy Spirit of God, you've convicted them. You've tugged at their heartstrings. And now, dear Lord, they need to surrender. Dear one, you lift... You lifted your hand because God has spoke to your heart. Yes, amen. You've lifted your hand. God has spoke to your heart. But now you must respond. He doesn't force himself on anyone. He woos you and calls you. The Holy Spirit is always gentle and peaceful. He's not forceful at all. He calls you. It's up to you. As many as received him, as it says today in our scripture... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even that believe upon his name. You can believe upon Christ today and call upon him. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer for you here in church and those out in Facebook that aren't saved. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Pray the prayer with me and receive Christ as your Savior. This is a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross 
and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You're here in the church auditorium and you say, I prayed it and meant it in my heart today, Pastor. As you prayed it, I prayed it and meant it in my heart. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see your hands. Just raise them up. Let me see your hands. Just raise them up high. Let me see your hands. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for these four precious souls. Amen. The Bible says, All the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth. Over 90 and 9 just people that need no repentance. We're thankful for these decisions. I hope there were some decisions out there in Facebook. If you're not saved or if you know someone that's not saved, ship it to them on Facebook, you that are out there. We're so thankful for what you've done. We're going to have a baptismal service now with Ada. We pray you'd bless that service. What we're going to do is we're going to go off to the Facebook now. And we'll be back on Facebook tonight. I don't know how to shut this thing off. It don't say finish. I'm going to turn it off. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> That's got to be funny. How do I do it? Do that. Mm, finish. There we go. All right. Facebook's getting a little. <laughs> Church, I got to, I got to share this with you. Right now on Facebook, I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. I tried to hit finish to turn it off. And it put a stocking cap on the top of my head right now. It's out there in Facebook. It's a red turkey stocking cap with the legs sticking up at the top and white feet. I'm not kidding. It's on my head right now. I didn't do it on purpose. I can't show you because... It goes off when I do that. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, look at it on Facebook. You'll see it. I'm glad for you that you got saved. She got it. Yeah, she did. Look at it. Show them. Show them. <laughs> Brother Wedby, you better not call me a turkey. Is <laughs> something? Is something? Oh, my Lord. I didn't do this. I'm not a clown. They probably exposed me on Facebook for some being kind of a crazy preacher. I don't know nothing about this, but I'm going to finish. <laughs> you turkey preacher. Goodbye. <laughs>